Right, greetings, this is um, my uh, Fim Frimley Park Hospital uh, video journal, video log. Uh, just a quick update, it's the 8th of December today. Um, December 2020. Um, regarding my father, uh, I've not heard up until the 6th of December, having trying to get, having attempted to try, try to get free to the hospital, but uh, come across uh, an automated system which uh, disengages you from the, the phone ringing, and then you're spoken to by an automated voice saying, try another number. And I, with a phone call from the same nurse team that phoned me last time, which enabled me, was the only uh, uh, the only thing that uh, enabled me to make contact because I couldn't get through a week. Again, these people aren't aware or say they're not aware, and I express my concern not being able to get hold of, being kept in the dark, couldn't count to learn an appointment, couldn't get free to rearrange one. So no one was paying attention that I'm left out in the cold, worrying about my father. You know, it's easy for them to say, oh, it's all in hand. But it's not in hand because it hasn't been in hand from the beginning. And I've been cut out in, in uh, lawful regard. And uh, it's been lip service and done privately. And the people on the ground aren't aware of the process. Or if they are, they just turn a blind eye. I'm not against the care my father's received, I'm very grateful, so uh, praise be to God, thanks be to God that um, I could get to visit him today, I made an appointment to uh, you know, uh, go and visit him and see for myself. Uh, the day before I, if I heard anything, I um, got received a card from my father's uh, sister-in-law my auntie, my mum's sister, sending him a birthday card and then I find, find her to thank her for sending that, explain my situation. Couldn't get through, still couldn't get through, so I couldn't give her any news on my dad. And, uh, <laughs> no, unaware of what was, what I'd been experienced, I, uh, my auntie was advising me to do this and do that. And I said, uh, invited her to try and ring and get through, see if she could get through, and if she did, to just pass on my concerns. Well, she managed to get through, but only to the uh, patient's inquiry desk, and they told her, I oh, gave her old news about my father, which I'd already known, which was about two or three weeks old, and... The phone number, which I already had, which I already explained to my auntie, but didn't, it, it didn't register that I'd been trying to ring in and cut off by this automated service. And she replied, uh, oh, you, I got through, Is, your dad's okay, gave me the information, and I explained that uh, that's not new and that's not an update on what from what I've last heard and been in touch and contact with people who's informed me. Uh, so that was second-hand news from uh, the operator thing, finding the ward. So the operator got through to the ward and they were told to call back in half an hour. And of course that stopped my auntie from phoning and she passed the information on to me. <laughs> and uh, I explained to her, well, I've been trying to do this all week so I, I, I'm not going to be hopeful. But I did give it half an hour and phone the number and it's the same automated service and cut off. So that's how you manage basically, that's how people are managed. And when I was called, there's all this crackling on the line you see. And I wondered, oh that would be used as an excuse to the staff on the ground. Oh, when they question, well, people are telling me that they've been lied to and cut off the phone. And we don't understand what's going on. And then they're told, oh, you know, their phones have had problems. I've already been told that by the ward. Oh, our phones are experiencing problems. 
yes, human problems through lying and managing and stopping people calling to the ward. Now, I, I'm in the dark. I don't know how many people are involved, who's aware of that and who isn't. I've just ex experienced it, so I wanted to give that update. But thankfully, I got um, a phone call from the team that are feeding my dad. Confirmed that they got the list that I passed on, which was good news. But his false teeth, because he's lost weight, his false teeth weren't fitting in. They didn't have any fix of them. Could I bring some? Because they, they hadn't got any in the hospital. And I said, absolutely, no problem. Thanks for ringing. Could I make an appointment? And I made an appointment. Spoke to the nurse on the ward, which I was passed over to, who was a bit a bit um, aloof, a bit cold, and I think that's the same lady that lied to me at the beginning, but I can't be sure, it's the same voice, same same accent and same um, racial heritage, uh, same, uh, same person, I think, but I, I can't be absolutely sure, who told me emphatically that my dad was not there and wasn't going to be there, and on querying and on um, uh, getting her to ring the police, take my phone number down and get somebody to call me back. She quickly backtracked and said, oh, your dad is here. So uh, under that pressure, and she's on the phone, to, while she's on the phone to me, said she just got a phone call to say, oh, he is here. Uh, so I was blatantly, blatantly lighty because she couldn't have had a phone call being on the phone to me. And I think that's the nurse who's uh, maybe a sister, perhaps, I'm, I'm not sure or a senior nurse or or somebody who operates the um, the calls on that particular number on that particular day but I don't know, I'm in the dark, I'm just sharing what I experienced so I've got that an appointment um, so one of the things I wanted to highlight is that the, the public body, the staff body and the general public aren't aware of the content martialized process. There's no head. You can't speak to the head. They're absent, and, in, and decisions are made in your absence, and they're passed down. And all the people they're passed down to are independent of the care plan and, and the package. But none of them have really got the head. So you, every time you speak to someone, you're not speaking to the head, you're speaking to individual parts. And even, even the tail is uh, aloof with any um, correlation. And, and, you're, and when those people lie, that have, have an avenue to know what's going on, and, and they keep, they're not telling you, or they're not um, avoiding direct questions. You know that uh, some something's been said or something's been held. The truth's been held behind your back. And other people, uh, another thing I'd like to bring to you, the public's attention and anyone interested, and any care staff, any caring nurses or doctors who may not be aware, that there's this old code of practice for nurses and doctors, and it's that they will do everything necessary that in their power to save a life, regardless of how much it will cost. And that is true to a lot of um, people's nature, That's, that would be my nature, that would be my philosophy pro-life. Um, I wouldn't stand by and watch um, euthanasia or ever go down that avenue, even, even though somebody's suffering horribly, the hospital generally keep people comfortable and, and manage their pain right up into the end. But when the regulatory bodies get involved, it becomes cold and calculated and a, and a process. You're being managed. Lives are being managed by accountants, and it cuts the head from the people who care on the ground. So the people who work in hospitals believe that they're providing their care, and they are. But what they don't appreciate is that the, the regulatory bodies and the law, if they were to look on the government website about um, what is expected as a from the service of the NHS, it, it's just one line, and that's um, that they're only obliged to uh, provide a reasonable service, and that's how it's worded to the public. So you could justify, well, what's a reasonable service, and 
what's your uh, definition of reasonable and why? Is it reasonable to give you a reasonable service because you're holding back on uh, financial difficulties and compromises? Uh, there's no, it's a grey area to provide a reasonable service. So one hand's telling you the um, NHS is like that, a wedge. It's got this double-edged service, it's got a two-faced service. And that compromises everybody involved, even the good caring people in the arm, among the uh, surgeons and physicians and uh, ground staff and carers and people who work in the hospital, porters and, you know, the logistics, it's controlled by a corrupted force which affects the head decision makers and uses the, the components within that disjointed service to potentially be exploited either by regulation or by direct intervention by somebody overseeing to, like in my instance, to cover up, uh, to protect their reputation. And then that pressure is uh, put upon the public body and people are out of their depth to deal with it and then, and, and then interplay comes active denial. The government deny it, so that forces everyone down the line to deny and ignore it, ignore the obvious elephant in the room while it's crushing people. And if anyone speaks out on the ground, they get they get squashed out and persecuted and uh, isolated, and the whole beast shows its teeth to that person. And I've experienced that in work in religious places. The whole lot shows its teeth when you stand up against it. And when you're uh, uh, independent and vulnerable, and you're a sole advocate. You're going up against a criminal concision of, of lying and denial and you haven't got a leg to stand on unless you've got a policeman with you throughout the whole process you try and explain it to the law and most type crimes I've reported to the law they are liberal um, PCs who politically correct police constables who are serving a liberal pleasing let's try and resolve this without without any prosecution or red tape or let's just go in try and advocate and smooth this over and cover it over and take the sides of the criminal rather than the victim rationalise it, oh they didn't mean it oh, you, know, you just want to forgive and forget, get on with it and you get this uh, soapy uh, wash by the, by the lawful powers and the the weakening of that uh, lawful right for a constable and a nurse. You know, they've got the authority to uh, make decisions, but they're choked by regulation. And a service which is directed by one head who's never, never in the building or never available to the family or the staff at any one given time. And it makes you wonder well, who's controlling this, overseeing this regu regulation and got their eyes on the phones, got their eyes on all the activity and metadata of uh, activity and and potentially whatever whatever corruption has been used to uh, cover up this um, pandemic of um, bad practice, malpractice. And you've got all these cases and the media spilling out one after the other but nothing changes because the regulatory bodies aren't changing the government aren't changing and the people on the ground aren't changing so it doesn't matter how many times it goes through the courts nothing changes so i just wanted to give that update so um and my thoughts on the uh, pitfalls and problems that I've recognised just to warn the public um, about the malpractice and criminal you know they say one thing and provide another face not everybody sees that service but it, it happens and when it does happen the other face will deny it and people are can't deny their other side of the face when you confront them, but they just won't 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 admit it. 
and they continue on in their willful uh, criminality and guilt transgression and that's what makes me cross because time and time again people are uh, abused, neglected, walked over and then the media justify it, the wonderful NHS how dare you speak out against these wonderful people holding it up as their champion while it stabs you coldly in the round the corner in, in private uh, don't don't just take my word for it um, investigate this and examine the broader picture of the hit, um, consistent cases and why that is uh, not everybody sees why it is because it's the first time they've ever come across it but I've come across it advocating in care and being on the end of a care provision directly or on behalf of somebody else being a guardian or advocate you know I can't deny it and I can't not say anything and warn people but my hearing my voice will get filtered because I am uh, monitored you know um, all mainstream independent platforms are owned, filtered and squashed out and you've got this body of interest that will protect its own interest and so you, potentially you can you get lied about, you can get um, discredited and you can be suppressed from your information getting to the public uh, but such as it is um, and I trust God, thank God for this opportunity and uh, I don't know how I'm going to find my father but I'll, I'll find out today and um, just hope and pray that there's been some improvement but I shall discover an update um, further on this evening when I get home and take it from there so I'm going to end this uh, part of the episode and um, leave it for now until the up, my uh, update this afternoon. Greetings, uh, well, praise the Lord, uh, it's been a good day, long day, um, had an appointment to visit my dad at 4 o'clock and he was fast asleep for the whole, I get an hour but he was asleep, bless him, and uh, able to eat able to speak to um, us, praise the Lord and thanks, to, all thanks to the Lord um, and thanks to anybody who's been praying, been in my, I've been in their prayers and my father, thank you very much and thank you very much to all those people involved at the hospital that are caring for well, my dad and particularly other people's loved ones. And it was uh, grateful to meet the people on the ground who work with my dad, who are looking after him. And uh, speaking to a few people about the phone problems I was having getting through, they're completely unaware of what I was going through. And completely unaware that I wasn't being updated and all apologetic. And um, I say, uh, that's not your fault. And, uh, oh, we have been having problems with the phones. And then I explained where well, the phone rings and uh, there's an automated service that kicks in and you're cut off from the phone ringing. And you get a voicemail, or, you know, like a voice response, try another number. And they've... Uh, 
been called out on that phone and there's been no problems when they've wanted to call me but I've been trying to get it through and they're completely unaware of it the public are completely unaware of it and it's just a, a nuisance to say the least it's like devilish anyway I wanted just to just so grateful that I can I got to see my dad and rearrange an appointment and I ran into this nurse which I was praying to on the way out of my visit and I was praying to when I when I made contact again to make another appointment. When I'm there I can just rebook another appointment, then I haven't got to phone up and if there's any change or emergency or anything they need then they will contact me at, at least and uh, on the way out I met um, one of the nurses that are feeding my dad because he's like um, not eating very much and he's not on liquid food he's on a they're moving him up to a more solid base and on the way out I was speaking to the people that are feeding him and asked and, and, and then that gave me the opportunity to ask at what time were they at my dad's side then I could book, book my appointment to correlate with them and have, have that interaction and I could be there and then I could uh, speak to the people involved rather than turning up and there's no one around to speak to unless the uh, doctor's on the round or it's a something is a by chance or and it's whoever is available to give you an update um, so I, I did manage to get an update from one of the nurses and there's been some progress and uh, a little progress and uh, my dad's recognising and responding to communication at least it's just not not very compliant and he's not eating very much and uh, I asked the, the nurse, and uh, what time are they there? What time does they feed my? What, what was a good time to come in when they were there? And they said, well, you can't visiting hours start at a certain time, and they do their rounds in the morning. And say, they said, but you could come supper time, which is at six, or in the evening. So I thought, oh, that's good. I I work round. Uh, made an appointment to correlate with when they're there so I could have that interaction so and that's what I was praying for so praise God for answering that prayer and I'm able to make a, a contact and rebook an appointment so I don't have to have all that trouble ringing and then the, the lady kindly gave me another number to every phone <laughs> so I've got a number for every phone if uh, because they, they said they were experiencing problems or, or I don't know if that they were told they were, were experiencing problems or they actually had been but anyway all that behind us I got um, some new contact numbers if I really need them so that was good and I spoke to my con uh, concerns about the Covid vaccine that's something that I needed, wanted to mention I wanted to find out if uh, I would be informed if if that came to it coming doing the rounds and my and my dad was unable to uh, communicate. Would they uh, inform me? And I told them that um, my dad's wishes would be not to have it. But the trouble is with my dad; he's vulnerable, and he say yes to anything unless you sit down and reason it through and go through the what it is, what, what it contains, so he can make his own informed decision. When I'd done that with him with the flu shot, he was shocked to f discover what was in it, especially heavy, you know, especially metals and viruses, and he, that's what made him stop, want to, you know, stop trusting the flu shot. But this uh, coat, uh, this uh, COVID vaccine, the, the ingredients haven't been list, listed. 
they're rolling it out with a sponsorship and then they're giving people cards to say that oh you're immune you've, you've got immunity so it's almost kind of like a grading system and I just wonder well, what where's that going to put people who don't who do refuse it and the uh, the way that that's going to unfold that, that that caused me to raise an eyebrow so anyway I've got that um, grateful that I've got that and I've got to see my dad and re make an appointment and um, so uh, not not really any change to my dad but um, I can only take it one day at a time I don't know if he's uh, how how much he'll improve or if he'll just get weaker and weaker and uh, fall asleep eventually I don't know but I was just grateful and thankful to get to see him at least and then follow up and then be there when he's more awake you know, having a meal but, but he may not be awake <laughs> but, uh, I'm just grateful for the, that appointment um, so that's what all we, the only news I've really got for the update I put um, I can't remember what I put on before this video and did I have any other thoughts but what I'm going to do is just going to close off with some scriptures, some psalms that I was uh, re reading through recently and I thought I'd just put some psalms on the on the video just for people who are seeking uh, light and uh, knowledge and the blessings of the scriptures and the the graciousness that uh, comes with hearing the word of God. Just going to read um, Psalm 50, which is a, a prophetical um, psalm. Well, they're all prophetical, but uh, Psalm 51 is um, one. Psalm 50 is Asaph. Psalm 51 is David, and he's asking for forgiveness after he went to Bathsheba, and he's looking for, he's repenting of his sins, and then Psalm 52, he speaks of the wicked, and uh, Psalm 53 is the unbelieving, unbelieving world, um, and prophecies of regarding Israel in the future, and so is Psalm 50. So I'll start Psalm 50. The mighty God, even the Lord, have spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come, and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very temptuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above, and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself, Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of, the, out of thy folds. Mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. I will eat the flesh of bulls. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? 
Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked God saith, what, what has the <coughs> excuse me, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and casteth my words behind thee, when thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself, but I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider, consider, consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise, glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. Psalm 51 Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy love and kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine in iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me, before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother, my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide, my, hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then I will teach transgressors thy, way, transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guilt, guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud unto thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a, con a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou will not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure, Unto Zion build thy, thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shall thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall I offer bullocks on, upon thine altar. So we have some prophetical words there um, regarding Israel's repentance in 50. Verse 15, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Have the Lord's salvation and atonement in Psalm 51, which was completed on the cross, and the gospel of uh, the pattern there of repentance, and the restoring of the heart by the grace of God and mercies of God in his judgments, which is all completed by the Lord Jesus Christ. For thou delight... Uh, verse 16, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. 
So there we have um, the pattern of humility and uh, seeking the Lord in the right heart and spirit. And then uh, prophetical fulfillment of God's uh, day, the day of the Lord, when he restores the temple to Israel. Um, right, I'm going to finish off with two more Psalms. Psalm 52. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue deviseth mischiefs like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, say thou. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee, Forever he shall take thee away, and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place, and root thee out of the land of the living, Selah. The righteous also shall see, and fear, and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches, and strengthened him himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will pray, pray, praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. Psalm 53. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand that did seek God every one of them has gone back they are all together become filthy there is none that doeth good no not one have the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread they have not called upon God there were there there were they in great fear where no fear was for God have scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them in sh to shame, because God hath despised them. O oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out as iron, when God bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. So that's a future prophecy to you come to pass. So I'll close it there. So there's uh, some very stark uh, contrasts <coughs> and some um, patterns of the wicked behaviour which is no different today uh, nobody does good none of us are righteous and everyone goes about their own way and nothing changes and uh, it's always the minority of good people that that suffer the, the brunt of things but none of us are good we all need forgiveness we all need uh, salvation and uh, so I'll just close off this uh, journal uh, with the invitation of the gospel that uh, the gospel of repentance towards God and faith in uh, Jesus Christ the Lord for the forgiveness of sins and it's that simple just to humble yourself, call upon the name of the Lord and be saved, believe and be saved. And God will do a marvellous work in your life. He'll bless your life abundantly. And that's a faithful promise. And that's been received by many faithful people who've put that to, te that to the test. And the psalm said uh, about sacrifice. Um, it's no... It's no sacrifice for the believer to call in faith. But you are, it is a sacrifice of your old way of life, if you like. You give up your old way of life or you lose your old way of life. And you're given it a new way of life, which is hard because you're... But also wonderful, you wouldn't have it any other way. You're, you're a prisoner to the gospel in one sense, that you're free in the Lord in a completely parallel sense.
So you're grateful to be have that freedom, but the the service that the work that's needed in the world and the service that is needed is a sacrifice. There's, there's a lot of uh, work that needs to be to be done, and it's it's a uh, relentless. People are dying every day, and. Uh, People need to hear the gospel. They need to have that uh, chance of salvation and hope, and to um, the opportunity to come to know the Lord. Although the opportunity is always there for them to seek out, but sometimes people don't know where to look. So it needs to be taken to people on, out in the street. Um, had a, some uh, quite some wonderful thanks to the Lord some wonderful um, witnesses today speaking to people briefly giving out gospel tracts please pre please pray for uh, those souls and those, for those tracts I gave out and all the tracts that are given out by people um, that's a wonderful blessing and uh, I keep those people in my prayers that cause, um, I hope that the Lord will bring some of those souls unto salvation and they will allow themselves to be uh, drawn and I hope, I hope that those uh, people accept the Lord and the Gospel and become saved and um, so that was a, a good day so I thank God for the day, thank God for all, all mankind, but particularly those people caring for my dad. And uh, I was able to get that uh, peace of mind for today. So I'm going to close there and I uh, haven't really got anything to add, I don't think. And uh, I'm really tired, so I'm going to close there. And Wish people a blessing. Pray for the people that have a blessing. Pray for my brothers and sisters. Pray to anyone who's discovered this. Um, oh, uh, yeah, there was a f one thing I did want to say. In a previous video, I men mentioned foreigners. And uh, I was worried that that would be taken out of context. I don't, I don't mean people of a different nationality or ethnic background. Um, what I meant was people who are foreign to one another, strangers to one another. They don't, they don't see. They don't. They're not working in that station. That's what I was uh, speaking of. So I hope nobody um, takes that out, takes that the wrong way. Not you know. And um, that was one of the things I was going to say. Uh, oh, there's something else as well. Um, but I'm too, my brain's really tired. Uh, yeah. No, that's it, it's gone. But I'm going to just uh, pray, close now. Um, um, wish people a blessing, pray for people have a blessing. Anyone seeking the Lord just to uh, have faith, faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. For the forgiveness of sins and the free gift of eternal life to repent to change your mind look heavenward look look to the cross and uh, humble yourself and, and believe call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall you will be saved and he's faithful to his promise uh, a great just grateful again for uh, brother and sisters praying for me and oh that was the thing I wanted to end on uh, for people not to fear to fear God but not to fear um, these machinations or these um, although they are a fearful thing when you get mischief and lies that, that is quite undermining undermines your trust and it's a uh, Uh, you know, it's a 
when, when you're on the end of it, you know it's 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 orchestrated. But when it's passed, you're and it goes away, and then there's denial, complete denial, and and people don't know about it as well. You're you're left with that impression, and you just have to carry on going. Um, and why I brought these things up was just to warn people in the public that, that you know this is a reality. These aren't just um, you know paranoid thoughts or conspiracy theories. The, the, these are things really happen. People really do get um, caught in the gears, and no, and uh, it's all covered over. Now I can't say how consistent that is and how often it happens. I only thank God, you know, I thank God for all the wonderful people and good people and all the good care I have received and my family. So I thank God and those people for for that and the heart of those people. But when you come across the other regulatory bodies and the administration, all the content martialized activity, that's when things can either go wrong or really be exploited to go wrong and that's where the tragedy and sadness and these horrible things happen and then people don't want to own up to it and uh, you know God is angry with the wicked every day and God is angry when people knowingly allow these things and don't speak up they don't stand up for what's right and that's what makes me cross and then you're 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 vulnerable and on your own it's it's like it's left for you to carry it it's it's left for you to be buried under it and if you haven't got christ it will absolutely destroy you and it'll undermine your confidence you won't want to go to another although you're not you're not um, unreasonable and in your mind to know that there are good, very good doctors, very good caring people, but when you've experienced something like that by a professional, it can, uh, you know, once bitten, twice shy. And you don't want to go back for a, another piece. You don't want to go back for another wound. And, it, and, and that those wounds aren't acknowledged, so those wounds can potentially stay open and get infected, and then that can destroy somebody's life. So that's why I wanted to reach out um, with sympathy, compassion to people that have been through it, and the frustration of what you have to go up against, the, an active denial, all the way up, and you get nowhere. And if you do get it through the court system, it doesn't really, unfortunately, it doesn't really change anything. And uh, but like I say, and like I stated, and have a faithful report of God is, God is judged, and He's just, and He's merciful, and He's mercifully stretched out to save sinners. And I, I was a sinner, and He saved me. So I have to view people in that um, that same light. And. But um, you can't allow people to walk over you uh, because they will, and they will bury you. And you got to make you got to stand up sometimes to a whole a whole consensus of this behaviour. And uh, you can't you can't do that on your own. And I could only do that with the strength and grace of God. So I thank God all, all thanks and. Glory and praise be to God and Jesus Christ, my Lord. So I'm going to close out in the wonderful name of our Lord. Um, wish people a blessing. And what I mean by wish for, I hope and pray for that people will be blessed. And I'm going to close in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.